No chit chat. Let's get the throttle body sorted, shall we? Welcome back to Making for Motorsport, where we make more, spend less, and go faster. So this is the third and final instalment in how to fit individual throttle bodies. So we've already covered off how to select the right size throttle bodies, how to fit them to your cylinder head, and also how to size your injectors and work with your other sensors that you need to make them function. In this episode, we're gonna talk about the ECU and what control algorithms you need to use and also things you need to watch out for when you're tuning. But we can't do much from here, so let's get out in the driveway. Okay, so we're back where we were at the end of the last video on the driveway. Made a few changes though. So we've got rid of the chocky block connectors and for the injectors and the TPS, so they're all wired in properly. We've got some proper braces on top of here now. So the throttle bodies are not going anywhere. Uh, we've had a few problems, a few problems. So the water outlet at the head going into the inlet manifold, yeah, so that leaked. When it gets up to temperature, pressure in the coolant system rises a fair amount, not massively, but a fair amount, and that was just overwhelming the inlet manifolds as they are, so a quick metal plate solved that issue. Um, when it was last running, it was running like a dog. And when it did get going, it was refusing to idle below 2000 revs. So we may have had a vacuum leak, tore it down, saw this. You may have spotted the culprit. And last of all, we've done away with the cable ties on the throttle um, cable and got a 3D printed version here. This is only a alpha. There'll be a better version of that along once I get time to design it. So I think we've covered off most of the pieces that needed doing. So it's time to run it properly and have a proper go. Whoa, whoa, whoa there, Mr. Speedy. Hold up. First off, we need to work out how we're tuning it and what control algorithm we're using. So the ECU when the engine's running controls two main outputs. One, sparking the ignition, and two, squirting in the fuel. And to work out those two key pieces of information, it only needs two inputs. One, engine speed and position in cycle, and how much air is going into the cylinders for every given cycle. Now that's a vast simplification. The ECU obviously collects lots of other information like coolant scent, coolant temperatures and intake air temperatures, but really they're just all inputs to work out those two critical pieces of information. No engine speed, that's usually pretty easy. There's normally an encoder wheel on the crankshaft and a sensor and maybe a sensor on the cam wheel. Pretty simple, but working out how much air's in the cylinder, well, that's where it gets a little bit trickier. And on most aftermarket ECUs, there's two options. One, speed density, and two, alpha N. So first off, we'll look at speed density. So speed density uses the manifold absolute pressure sensor to work out how much air is gonna go into the cylinder. Now that's basically what the air pressure is on the intake side of the intake valve. So the higher pressure, so close to atmospheric, full throttle, or even boost, the more air is gonna go into the cylinder. The closer it is to idle or a kind of a higher vacuum, the less air is going to go in. Pretty simple. So it's accurate, it's simple, and it's probably the mode of choice for everyone who's still running a plenum because it needs a fairly stable uh, pressure signal for it to work. And for that, you need a fair plenum size of decent volume that's a fair distance away from the intake valves, something which we don't have with individual throttle bodies. So the alternative here is alpha N. Now that again uses two inputs. N is engine speed and alpha is throttle angle, which is obtained via the throttle position sensor. 
Now, Alpha N traditionally has been used for throttle bodies, especially on highly strung, naturally aspirated engines, where you might have a long duration camshaft with lots of overlap that gives you lots of pulsing in the inlets, which would be really hard for a map sensor to deal with. But it does have some downsides. So this may be a bit of a simplification, but it'll illustrate the point. So this is a throttle body it's from a V-twin motorbike, but that doesn't really matter. It serves the demonstration purpose. I'm gonna use this light to shine through it so you can see the cross-sectional area that the air has to flow through and how that changes as we change the throttle angle. So at the moment, the throttle is closed. You can't see any light really at all. All the air is going through an idle control circuit. And we crack the throttle by just a, a few percent. And suddenly you can see a lot of light compared to previously. No light at all, some light. Well, that's a big increase. Zero to anything is a big increase. Then as you increase the throttle, the light increases more and more. And increases more and more until you get to about 30, 35%. And it's, you've got loads of cross-sectional area. So that last bit of throttle movement, that last 10, 20%, well, it's not really making that huge a difference. But that first 10, 20%, especially that first 5%, makes a huge difference. You go from essentially zero to a fair amount. Now, I might build a flow branch and come up with some actual numbers on this at some point but for now we just have to cope with the the flashlight demonstration but so if you can imagine especially at low revs you give this a small blip and if only for a few engine cycles before it has a chance to rev up and want to consume a lot more air the engine's probably getting most of the air it needs so it's going to get basically a full charge of air, so essentially full throttle, but the engine's only seeing 30% throttle, so you're only seeing a very small load. It's transient, but it's there. But the key point is that you're gonna get a lot of change in engine state and airflow for small throttle openings. So that means we need to change the way we deal with the VE table. So this is the Speedwino base tune VE table, so volumetric efficiency. And this table's only so big. But at the moment, it's the wrong type. So at the moment, this is speed density because it's using fuel load up here at KPA. So that's the manifold absolute pressure sensor. So if we go up to um, close this, engine constants, go from map to TPS, so that's changing to alpha N, then that should change that vertical column here, and you see it's changed to TPS. So now we're in alpha N. So this table's only so big, so it's 16 by 16. So you really need to focus all these cells where they're gonna have the biggest difference. Because if you've got very little difference in engine state between say 60% and 100%, well then you can have your, and your, uh, your data fairly spread out. But if you're gonna have a huge difference on light throttle, chain, light throttle openings, especially if you're gonna drive up the road, so you can do a lot of cruising, a lot of traffic driving, you need to focus a lot at this lower area. So that's what we're gonna do now. So we're gonna change this column to something that's a little bit more usable. So we set the first one to zero, so that represents idle. And then we have I set the first one to one, though it changes to two in the software. Don't ask me why. And then we go two there. See, it changes to two. Who knows? If you know, put an answer in the comments. I'd love to know. It just always seems to do it for me. Maybe I'm missing a setting. Anyway, so we'll carry on. So instead of going to, th we'll go to four, and then we'll go to uh, no, six, and then we'll go to, to 10, 14, 
18. So we've used really pretty much half the load cells at the side and we've, we've pretty much not got past 20% throttle yet. And then as we get up, we can increase the gaps. So we're getting quite close to kind of the tens that you'd normally see. This is purely an example. When you get an en when you get the engine running, if you find you've got some flat spots that don't quite work or something that, that that's not quite right, you can move these back around. So you can change the, 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 the spacing. So if you find that you do need more information all up at the top, then you can squash it down slightly. I know for me, this is probably a bit extreme. I will want to know more about up here because of the type of driving that the Mini is going to be doing. But this probably isn't that extreme for a road car or for something that's going to do a lot of cruising. So are there any other options? Well, yes, a lot of people use switching tables. So they use um, speed density, so manifold absolute pressure at lower throttle openings, a cruise and idle, and then they switch to Alpha N at higher throttle openings, so closer to the higher power stuff. Um, you can also use on certain engine, um, sorry, certain ECUs, they have an ITB mode, I think Megasquirt does. I don't know much about this, I think it's probably more of a blend between the two. Um, for the Mini, I'm just gonna stick to Alpha N. It's traditionally the motorsport choice, um, and I think it'll work probably the best because I'm not interested in low speed running. I think what I may do if I have a road car at some point that I confer to this, I'll probably give it a try then. But for now, I'm sticking to Alpha M. Okay, so I filmed the whole process. I loaded a bass tune, I configured it for my engine, I changed the VE table, I calibrated my sensors and pressed the start button. But it was boring. My values are of no use to you guys. The piece to take away from this is that I used a decent bass tune. If you've seen my other videos, you'll know I'm using the Speeduino, the $160 DIY standalone. And it started straight away. I knew my wiring was right. I knew my values were right. And once it got up to temperature, this is how it sounded. So the key thing here is if it's not working and you think you've got a decent bass tune, stop. It shouldn't be that hard. Something's wrong. Either the crank trigger's not sinking or you're losing vacuum or there's something fundamental in the wiring that's wrong. Stop. Check everything. So I'm the first person to admit I am not God's gift to tuning. I've done it a few times. I know what I know, but I'm no expert. Also, the Mini... It's quite specialised. It's not the best car to show you out there how I do it because hey, it's only got first gear and it's not road legal. So I've got to wait until I get to an event. But basically, I just drove it up and down. I looked at the data. I used auto-tune a little bit. And within about an hour, I got it to this stage. got to be happy with that I mean sounds pretty good and it wasn't hanging around definite improvement on the carbs <laughs> event report coming soon if you're interested put a note in the comments so now we've got a running car on throttle bodies Let's type a few of these loose ends. So if you cast your mind back to the first episode, you remember from the thumbnail, I think I promised 80 pounds for individual throttle bodies. Well, let's see how we've done there. 
The throttle bodies themselves were £40 on eBay, including the injectors, and that is a bargain, but you can still pick them up at that. I know, because I've got some in my watch list, because, hey, what's better than a set of throttle bodies? Well, having two sets of throttle bodies, so, hey, shoot me. I spent £15 on filament to print the intake manifolds. Now, if you want to make them out of metal, it might cost you a little bit more, but that's what I spent. I had to junk the couplers, so I bought £20 worth of silicon hose, and I also spent another £10 on some Michelor style hose clamps when I found the vacuum leak. I also spent another £10 on some lovely colour-coded vacuum hose. Why not? So £95 is pretty close, so I'm quite happy with that versus the £80 that we set out to do. Um, yes, there are other costs, so you do need an ECU, you need wiring, you need a car to put them on, you need a, a house to live in, you need clothes to wear. There are always other costs, but to go from a single throttle body plenum style to individual throttle bodies, 95 pounds. I'm pretty happy with that. So just talking about the manifold for a second, it hasn't given me any issues at all. There's been no material problems at all. Now. I'll follow up with a dedicated video on the 3D printed manifold pretty soon once it's had a little bit more time to mature on the car. But at the moment, looks like a good solution. Something I didn't show you was balancing or synchronizing the throttle bodies. So they're each feeding every cylinder with the same amount of air. Now, this is important for a really buttery smooth idle. Idle's not that important to me. And plus, because I hadn't broken them down, they retain their factory setting, so they're not far away at all. If you've dismantled or changed the spacing on your throttle bodies, you are going to have to do this. You will need to check this. So I will reach out a decent video and put a card at the end. So you've got to watch till then. It's all running. So what have we learned? Well, number one, it is perfectly possible to get some bargain individual throttle bodies from a motorbike put them on your car engine and have a really good result. Yes, there's a couple of compromises, mainly around that throttle cable, but as long as you're aware of them, shouldn't be a problem. Number two, there is no witchcraft here. This needn't cost you thousands. And with a bit of research and a half decent bass tune, you can be up and running very easily. Um, okay, to get every last horsepower out of your setup, you're gonna need some dyno time, you need a man or a woman who knows what they're doing and you need to spend some money. But to get out there, have some fun and play around with your car, you can do that very cheaply. So that's it, how to fit individual throttle bodies, done. Thank you very much for sticking with me. If you've enjoyed this, then consider subscribing. There's a long list of videos I've got very similar content to get you going faster for less. Or if you want to see something in particular, put a message down in the comments, please. I'd love to hear what you're interested in seeing more of. So that's it from me. Until next time, keep your throttle bodies individual and catch you later.